Hello, good afternoon and welcome to the Midday News. The news is live on Joy 99.7 FM here in Accra and Kumasi. We're on Love 99.5 FM and over 30 affiliates across Ghana's 16 regions. We're on Kekeli Radio in Ho, A1 Radio in Borga, Tanga, ATL FM in Cape Coast, Radio Max in Takrade. We're on Sun City Radio and Jubilee FM in Keta. We are live on Twitter Spaces. We're on Facebook. We're on MyJoyOnline.com app. The Midday News is sponsored by Petrol Soul, your clean fuel in full quantity. Petrol Soul, always a delightful experience. This afternoon, pressure mounts on the government to make public the full report on the APHC explosion that killed more than 10 people and raised to the ground an entire community. Details as mining advocacy NGO Wakam accuses government of lack of transparency and accountability. The fact finding committee is a report that was submitted, but it does not be made public. This is of serious concern. We don't have the official report. We're here from the MC of the area who says more than a dozen people are still receiving treatment. And then we have two who have, who have been paralyzed. And these are the people that we are still taking care of and providing their ENTs to the hospitals. And they will be supporting them to pay their bills and other also, government confident it will attain the required 80% subscription of domestic debt exchange by January 31, as it expresses uncertainty about total exemption of individual bondholders. It's going well. Um, need to engage uh, more of the individual bondholders. I think there's more than enough time to do that. And we are confident that we will close on January 31st. I'm not sure that um, anybody can be fully exempted. We'll get to hear from a former finance minister, Dr. Kwabina Dufour, who insists there is no justification for President Ekofado to keep the current size of government while attempting to convince bondholders to accept losses. The 209, Prof. Mills reduced the ministries from 27 to 23. You know that? Oh, okay. Yes. President so Kofor went with 27 ministries. And seven persons have been arrested for engaging in cybercrime with 11 more on the wanted list as the Inspector General of Police hints of a yet-to-be-released extensive investigation covering victims and suspects. For the first time in the history of this country, you are going to hear a whole bunch of things about people who have been duped across the space of the internet. Meanwhile, the IGP insists false prophets will have no place to operate under a new regime to go hard on prophecies. We have sports. We versus AFCON 2021 where Comoros confers they cheated in the final group game of Group C. And between six and $13,000 all way to die. The dilemma of holding heart patients at the Kolebuka Thoracic Center. Sometimes when you mention the amount, the patient, uh, parents break out in tears because some of them cannot actually imagine what the equivalent of $6,000 looks like. But there's hope as Chinese investors commit to pay for surgery of 25 needy children with holding heart annually for the next 10 years. And later in the bulletin, we recap some of the biggest music collaborations between Ghanaian and international acts. We have that and more in this afternoon's edition of the Midday News. I am MFA Apau. This is your home of independent, fearless, and credible journalism. Please stay for details. Thanks for sticking with us. Let's settle for details. And this afternoon, there's pressure on government to make public the full report on the Apiati explosion that killed more than 10 people and raised to the ground an entire community. Mining advocacy NGO Wakam is accusing the government of lack of transparency plus accountability. Speaking at the launch of a report and analysis of the explosion, Executive Director of Wakam said issues of public safety are issues of important public discussions. We'll hear from him shortly but first, Maxo Agbagba recounts what happened exactly a year ago in the small community of the Western Region. The explosion rocked the small community near Bogosu exactly a year ago. Apiatse was flattened. Bodies were littered all over, with some of them trapped and buried under the rubble. The vehicle carrying the explosives shattered into tiny pieces. My old house is closer to the road. Oh, your house is closer yeah, to the road. I have so many people. Joseph Apia was at work when he was informed about the death of his son, 21 year old Justice Kwesi Takwa. The spark started. Yeah. He rather rushed to the house and then wake the mother up. The mother was sleeping. Then went back to take videos of. 
Janet Amate's one-month-old baby miraculously escaped death after their building collapsed on her. She sustained injuries on her face. A retired ear, nose and throat surgeon, Dr. Paul Kwao in Todi says some of the residents are experiencing mild to moderate hearing loss. Even though they have been given prescriptions, I think they did not manage to get some of the treatment. Almost all of them had mild to moderate hearing loss. There were claims that the truck carrying the explosives did not have any escort contrary to the safety regulations governing the transportation of such materials. The Port Divisional Chief Nana Atakwejo Bempi II says the truck had no escorts. In February 2022, the company involved in the manufacture of the explosives that devastated Apiatse Magzam Company Limited said it disagrees with findings of the Ministry of Lands and Natural Resources that suggest its regulatory breaches led to the explosion. It said the company that transported explosives, Artans Logistics, must be blamed. Although Maxam Company Limited disagreed with the findings, it agreed to pay a $6 million fine Im imposed on the company. <laughs> These women are gathered under tents singing to welcome a government delegation led by the Lands and Natural Resources Minister Samuel Abujinapo. The Port Divisional Chief Nana Atta Kujubrembi II says some victims of the Piazza explosion are now physically challenged with no funds to get medical care. Some of the residents are still at the hospital. Others are still recuperating. We do not have any money. That's why we are begging for support. Some of our people are now physically challenged and cannot do any active work. My colleague Max Olabagba is back in the community. I'll get to him shortly, but we can hear from the executive director of Wakam, Daniel Owusu-Kuranti. He says government and the mining industry have not been transparent on the matter. We are aware that the Minister for Lands and Natural Resources constituted the fact-finding committee in the report that we submitted, but it has not been made public. This is of serious concern because there appears to be a solution of major public interest. The end of today's discussion is to mark the one year of the appearance of this and stress on life of the affected people, demand transparency for the causes and effects of the incident on the people. Well, that's um, Dr. In, Mr. Daniel Ogusu Krantin, the executive director of Wacom. They're speaking about the report. We've been hearing from a lecturer at the University of Cape Coast also who read extracts of the report and also wants the full details of the report to be made public. Well, my colleague, Max Olagwagba, of course, has been to the community and back. He's at East Lego now where the launch of the report is taking place and joins us now. Max, let's start with the findings. Wacom says the investigation of the circumstances that led to the APRT explosion have been shrouded in secrecy. Tell us more. Yes, Oliver. Um, Wacom says the state and the mining industry have not been transparent and accountable to the citizens. Um, it says although the PRC incident attracted national and international interest, um, the investigations of the circumstances that led to the accident have been shrouded in secrecy, secrecy to the sense that the outcomes of the report of the investigation have not been made available um, to the public. And all the seekers um, here today at this event have been complaining about that at the past. Well, there are other findings as well that uh, they've been talking about. Let us in on them. Well, Wacom says the citizenry has not been sensitized enough on the dangers associated with accidents involving hazardous and explosive materials. They say the tendency, therefore, is for people to move to the craft scenes and to be the first to capture the incident um, for social media. It says, um, although um, the loss... Unfortunately, I lost my colleague, Maxo Agbagba, and we are told that the report also said the explosion could have been prevented um, if um, a lot of things had been done. But this is a story that uh, we are following closely. Maxo Agbagba has been on the beat uh, since that explosion, and there's more of it on myjoyonline.com. Let's turn our attention to the economy now, and government says it remains confident its domestic debt restructuring program will be subscribed by at least 80% of its creditors in barely two weeks. The invitation for subscription elapses 
on January 31, and this deadline is the third fixed by government since the quest to make the nation's debt sustainable that, that it took off in December 2022. Already, various stakeholders, including individual bondholders, won their investments exempted from the exercise. Finance Minister Ken Ofriata tells my colleague, uh, Joy Business Editor George Riafi, that a total exemption is not likely. So I think there's, you know, goodwill um, in that sense and we should be able to hit our target. I, I get you on the, the challenges that is ahead of us if there are delays and all the rest. Right. But for these individual holders, it looks like they have just one passionate appeal that Honorable Minister, mm -hmm. we're having challenges, we're struggling. Can you exempt us? Mm -hmm. Is that possible? Mm. Um, I, I'm not sure that um, anybody uh, can be fully exempted. But George, note that it is voluntary. Oh, in, in one breath, we get the understanding that if you don't sign up to this uh, program... Uh, if we as a nation in totality fall below what we think is an 80% threshold for signing up, we have a problem. It's not you, George, you have or whatever. But the cumulative effect of um, going um, having a significant uh, proportion of this 137 billion not being intended in brings the country into jeopardy. Mm -hmm. And that's really the fact. But within the program itself is what can one do um, to tweak, make changes, so that there's, a, there's burden sharing towards achieving a stable economy in the future. So all that we are seeing right now is people speculating of the impact of um, the debt exchange uh, on their future livelihood. And that we are listening to and saying, what can we do um, to create a bit of a balance? So even as um, we have exempted the union's pension funds, we are speaking to them to engage them to see how best that would also not really aggravate the situation that well, there are a lot of talks ongoing. The finance minister insists these talks will be concluded by January 31. So we also anticipate an 80 percent, uh, up to an 80 percent participation. So how do you build a consensus um, to get to get to that? So I mean, the truth of the matter is that yes, it's two weeks, but we've been talking since December 5th. Um, so these discussions um, with the banks or financial institutions, which is really uh, very crucial to to the extension and the discussions of the union's um, pensions and it's also gone very well and it's going well. Um, need to engage uh, more of the individual bondholders. I think there's more than enough time to do that and we are confident that we will close on January 31st. Ken Ofereta is Ghana's finance minister. Well, former finance minister Dr. Kwabna Dufo is meanwhile insisting cutting down on expenditure through restructuring of government must be pursued. He's been speaking to Raymond Nakwa on up front. When we were to go over the hill, yeah. we can come back for them. Okay. We are in difficulty now. We should cut down expenditure. The 209, Prof. Mills reduced the ministries from 27 to 23. You know that? Oh, okay. Yes. So the Kufu went with 27 ministries. Prof. Mills cut it down from 27 to 23. Mm. The fiscal deficit, which we inherited, was 14.5% of GDP. Prof. Mills said, well, we have to cut the whole thing down. And the first year, we aimed at cutting down to 9.4%. At the end of the year, we had 9.7. Well, he's been touching on government's goal for oil program, uh, to, which is to minimize the pressure on the currency and have cheaper fuel at the pumps. Uh, Dr. Dufour believes this can be handled in a much effective manner. Here's how. Using gold for butter, as, as butter for oil, I don't support it. Especially if it's not going to bring in crude oil. Mm -hmm. If it's crude oil, uh, we are going to rehabilitate Tama oil refinery, or we're going to give the crew to I hear a new refinery is being built. Yes. Okay. And these two companies are going to refine the crude. For us to have the, the byproducts, mm. the inflation we're going through are from the byproducts that we are importing. Yeah. 
I mentioned diesel, that in the balance petrol, of petrol. Yes, the, the petrol. Route, in fact, diesel went up by almost 196% in December. It's a, a major source of inflation. Mm -hmm. They're driving inflation. So if we bring the crude oil and it's processed, and we get the byproducts here, the prices will be cheaper. Mm -hmm. But if we're going to use gold to bring in the finished products, finished products, we are importing inflation from outside. Former Finance Minister and NDC Presidential Hopeful, Dr. Kwabena Dufo, that full interview will air tonight at 6 p.m. on the Joy News Channel with Raymond Akwa. It's up front, also on all our social media platforms. Now, seven persons have been arrested by the police for their various role in cybercrime activities. The service is also on a hunt for 11 more people identified. The Inspector General of Police, Dr. George Kufudampari, says the police will, in the coming days, make public outcome of a comprehensive investigation covering victims and suspects of cyber crime. He was responding to public interest questions at the Public Accounts Committee hearing into the Auditor General's report of 2020. The challenge used to be the case where we were having an environment where people can just walk to any service provider and get a number unregistered. Fortunately, with the registration of the numbers and the blackmailing, so to speak, of all numbers which are unregistered, there is a difficult for these people to continue. So it has even helped us in terms of defining the space as to how easily you can assess these people and have them arrested. But the tail end of it is also our addressing system and how to even to locate the house of a person that you've been able to do. Because for instance, in other jurisdictions, you always know where somebody lives. And if you have that environment, we can assure with the police and by extension other security agencies who made this country zero crime. For instance, there were a couple of instances where people have been duped on e-commerce platform, e-commerce market platforms, because the vacation is long going, I don't want to mention names here, who have been duped. And as we speak, almost about 18 people have been identified, and out of the 18, seven people have been arrested. At times, some of these things, we, we, we try not to go out there immediately, but well, he also announced a new regime to go hard on prophecy, saying actions of some men of God are rather creating fear and panic in society. Why should it be such that you found something, God has revealed something to you and you want to share with me? You have to make it a showmanship and tell the whole country that I'm about to die. But the point is that you go and make such an announcement across the whole world. And I have a wife, I have children. So every day when I live in my house and I always get up around 3 a.m., up around 3 a.m. And today I slept up to 5 a.m. My wife will be thinking that I'm dead. <laughs> and this is something she is going to live with for the rest of her life. And why is it that God himself decided not to tell us when we are going to die? It means a lot. We are deep-seated Christians that we don't joke with godliness. But we also will not allow anybody to use God to create a mess and confusion because God is not a God of confusion. Dr. George Ekufudampari is Inspector General of Police. While well, the Public Accounts Committee is continuing their sitting today, and my colleague James Saveji is at the hearing and joins us on the line. James, the Foreign Ministry has been explaining some issues before the committee. Tell us about it. Yeah, so two quick issues. The foreign ministry, first of all, is saying that a project that was initially uh, uh, was supposed to be executed at 1.4 million Ghana cities has been, in 2007, has been executed in 2021 uh, at a cost of 7.9 million Ghana cities. The explanation from the ministry was that the project delayed for 13 years because the contractor, uh, during the period, fell ill. Another issue was that the uh, former, uh, Her Excellency uh, Hananyako, a former mission head to Tel Aviv, has been searched to refund to the state some 13,619 US dollars that was captured as an unapproved expenditure on Ghana Day celebration. But I'm afraid the latest on the uh, Ghana's High Commissioner to uh, Australia is that I spoke with the minister just after the sitting and he has indicated that 
the, uh, the high commissioner has not been sacked, and uh, so he's gone on retirement, and that is why he has been uh, 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 he has returned to the country. The ministry is in consultation with the president to appoint a replacement for him. Okay. That's my colleague James Aveji taking us on a quick break here on the Midday News. We are live on Joy 99.7 FM in Accra, in Kumasi on Love 99.5 FM. The Midday News is sponsored by Petrosol, your clean fuel in full quantity. Petrosol, always a delightful experience. And pressure has been mounting on government to make public the full report on the Apiatsi explosion. A year on, that explosion we know killed more than 10 people and raised to the ground an entire community. We've been hearing from mining advocacy NGO Waka accusing government of lack of transparency plus accountability. When we return, we'll bring you sports and then between six and $13,000 or way to die. The dilemma of holding heart patients at the Kolobu Cardiothoracic Center. But there's hope as Chinese investors commit to pay for the surgery of 25 needy children with holding heart annually for the next 10 years. I'll tell you more. And later, we recap some of the biggest music collaborations between Ghanaian and international acts. Thanks for staying with us. Let's do sports. Michelle, quick. Is here. Yes, Emma, if I remember last year, almost around this time, everyone was let sad because Comoros beats Ghana in the final <laughs> group game of the Afghan 2021. Well, their FA president says that in that game, they cheated because, you know, around that time, COVID-19 was still, uh, you know, relevant in the <laughs> system. So all teams were supposed to carry out and, b- and put forth a negative piece of their players before they played. Okay. But the FA president, as it's well then yesterday, in defense of Cameroon FA president Samuel Eto, who was also accused of, you know, dealing or of, you know, uh, fidgeting, let's say fidgeting okay. with PCR outsets of other players, with other teams. He came out in defense of Eto saying that, let me, let me read what he just said. Mm-hmm. <laughs> read it to me. He says, We also cheated against Ghana, so it's time to stop this useless polemic about my friend Eto. Let's stop whining and move on. Contrary to what he said, I do not want to go into details. We are accused calf and fecker foot against ghana i say it and repeat it we had positive cases of COVID, mm. but we still managed to get them these players to play that's what he said at his wedding yesterday meanwhile will <laughs> anything just... happen well the story also goes on to say that he's he clarified that these players after the calf test they went on to do other medical tests okay we came in to say that uh, they had negative tests mm. not positive so it seems like now there are two different tests, one from calf and also one from whatever that was the event. Okay. To do their tests. Well, we need to be following myjournalline.com yeah. for <laughs> slash sports for more on this. Thank you very much, Michelle Okuenu. Now, uh, to be diagnosed with a hole in heart could mean a death sentence for many in Ghana because of the cost implication. On the average, heart surgery in Ghana costs between $6,000 and $13,000. With the cost of heart surgery out of the reach of most Ghanaians, most patients are left to wait for the benevolence of individuals and organizations in some cases die before care would arrive. But as Elton Brobe reports, a Chinese investor has stepped in to pay for the cost of treatment at least for the next 10 years. Statistically, one child out of 100 births has a heart or chest condition. Smoking, excessive drinking, long exposure to x-ray and poor eating habits by pregnant women are some of the causes of heart and chest conditions in children. The taking of drugs without prescription and the failure of some expectant mothers to attend alternate care are the other causes. For most patients suffering the disease, cost is a huge barrier. Here is consultant at the National Cardiothoracic Center, Dr. Ko Enswa Mensa. But one of the pains that we have had is to see a child with a holy heart condition who can be saved through relatively simple uh, surgery. And there are no resources to be able to do that. It's, it's very painful. Sometimes when you mention the amount, the patient, uh, parents break out in tears because some of them cannot actually imagine what the equivalent of $6,000 looks like. And to have the opportunity to be able to do free surgeries for 25 children every year, that's about a third of our capacity now. It's extremely significant. But there is hope now, at least for the next 10 years, because patients without means to undergo surgery can apply for support from the Shenyuan and Shenyuan Foundation. Named after 17 year old Shen Wan himself, a whole in heart survivor, is the son of Chinese investor Shen Shan, who is a founder and chairman of the Sunda and Keda groups of companies with operations in Ghana in the last 20 years. Realizing the difficulties his son went through and the impact it had on his family after being diagnosed with a hole in heart at age five, 
He gladly accepted a call, but the businessman Herbert Mensah suggested to him the idea of lending a hand to help patients in need at the cardiothoracic center. This is a time we need to do the right thing to pay back to the Ghana society because we are investing in Ghana near 20 years. Ghanaians are very nice and kind. I can feel that from the heart because I'm very familiar for the country. So that's the reason I just discussed with my father, my wife, and my two children. I say, do you like to build a foundation in Ghana to help the children? They really have the same sickness. They feel happy. They say they need like to do that. Well, the Chinese investor to the rescue ending that report. Well, um, the Tamale High Court has dismissed two cases brought before it challenging the outcome of the 2020 parliamentary results of the Savalugu and Zabzugu seats. In the case of the Zabzugu seat, the judge, Justice Daniel Obing, said the evidence presented showed the Electoral Commission followed due process in conducting that parliamentary elections held in the area. He said he did not see any irregularities that should warrant a reversal of the declaration.